Welcome back to another episode, you legends. Here we go. So, um, yeah, the topic to kickstart this episode is Rasmus Hoyland. I feel like no matter what we do, no matter how much game time we give the lad, he's going to complain. He's going to leak stuff to the press. Him and his agent, they seem to be really problematic right now. And, um, yeah, football's not what it used to be. Before, May and I could have Dwight York, Ted Sheringham, and uh, Andy Cole, rotate them, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, people will be happy, kumbaya. And the thing is, he's actually playing well, he's putting up the numbers, but the thing I can't get over is the constant complaining, constant whining, and he's not actually playing really well in terms of his overall performance, it's just his goal contributions that stand out right now. In the last episode, we actually made it through to the fifth round of the FA Cup, so that's going to be something that we're going to be playing in this episode. So we've got Olympic K Marseille, West Ham United, uh, we've got Stoke City, and at the end of the episode, we're going to cap it off with a game against Chelsea at home at Old Trafford. Here we go. So, round of 16 is upon us. Uh, last season's finalists, Olympic K Marseille, they're going to be playing against us. they got the likes of Martial in their squad and Doku seems to be a new face. Guedes was there last season, but I feel like uh, him being surrounded by more talented players like Martial and Doku is going to be um, a harder battle uh, compared to the Champions League final. In their last five games, they uh, won two, drawn one and lost two. So, uh, their form is a bit up and down at the minute whereas our form is a bit not even a bit is way more consistent and in terms of their goals they seem to be getting goals from all areas of the pitch so we can't just uh just mark out their strikers mark out their wingers and uh, assume that's the job done we're gonna have to keep an eye on all of these guys because it's either that their center backs are going up the pitch and banging uh, or scoring bangers or they're getting goals from set pieces. So we need to be wary of them too. I feel like the, the tough times are past us now. And as you guys can see, we're going to go into this first leg with a really strong side. The Doji uh, playing off the left-hand side on the left of uh, Martinez, who's next to Tomori. And uh, Delos playing off the right-hand side. Zaya Emery gets a start. We need to put more trust into him. And with Zaya Emery, he's playing really well on the side, if I'm honest with you. Despite his average rating, he does get the job done, especially transitioning from defence into attack, carrying the ball. Let's go. Garnacho plays it to Delo, who's running down the line. He's got Parisi on him. Parisi, uh, we almost went in for him, you know. I can't lie, his uh, his attributes were looking really good over Adogi's. But I feel like uh, Adogi has a higher ceiling with his development. We've got uh, Guimarães. Fernandez outside the box, right foot strike. Leno tips over the bar for a corner. Bruno crosses this one in. Going Martinez gets ahead on that, almost gives us the lead. Leno denies us back to back. And uh, Mbemba is under pressure. We can see the throw in. Go on, Bruno Fernandez gives it to Guimaraes. Come on, play it in the gap. It was probably less likely to happen compared to all the other attempts to play in behind. But uh, when you get frustrated, you just don't care anymore. You're just going to keep continuing to try and force things. Because I do like to play direct. I don't like to continuously just pass it around and break them down slowly. I do like to get the job done quick and efficiently sometimes. What a challenge there by Zaire Emery. Bruno, come on, Garnacho. Gets the ball under control. I'm going to aim for Guimaraes. He takes too long to swing it in. Just slow build up from the French uh, champions. Gay. Doku takes the ball down nicely. Does a 1-2 with Martial, maybe. No, Martial completely ignores him. Uh, Adoji is struggling to keep Doku at bay. Martial gives it to Vitinha in the centre. Vitinha gets the shot off his 1-0 to Marseille. Oh, my goodness me. That was, that was actually a good finish from Vitinha. I thought Diogo Costa had his angles. We're trailing 1-0. It's not something that we haven't bounced back from before. I feel like my team is just second. They have second half syndrome. Like that's when they wake up. That's when they try more. It's been a while since we've been a goal down at half time. The low. Let's see if we can respond. Ball goes in. Hinkapi heads it away. Tomori. How's Hinkapi got a knock after he brought down Victor Oshiman? Garnacho. Ball played into the box. Come on, Rashford. Why would you do that? That's the problem with this team. Like, why are you getting the cross isn't for you, one. And if you're not going to stick your head on it, don't touch it. 
I'm tired of these stupid first touches in the final third. Zaya Marie wins the aerial duel. Adogi. Uh, Emery. Gimarez. Bruno Fernandes turn. Go on, Bruno. You're inside the penalty area. Make it count. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. That's what we needed. A bit of individual determination. Someone that can go direct. Someone that can hit the ball while moving with momentum. Because so far, these guys, they take the ball down. They stand still. And it's like there's no there's no oomph behind the next kick, whether it's a pass or a shot or like um across the across the um field ball. Like these guys, they 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 got little foot syndrome too, Bruno. It's like Emery. Oh, Gimarez plays it in the gap. Marcus Rashford thinks it over the key pass. Someone's there, obviously. And Bemba's there. Oh, so close to taking the lead. Doku up the other end has uh, Martial running ahead. Vitinha returns it to Doku. Doku's just been an issue, man. I can't keep hold of him with Adoji. Adoji's just too attacking minded, so he's never goal side. And if he's goal side, he hasn't got the momentum as Doku's normally running, and Adoji's just jockeying back. He's in the gap. Not that the low couldn't stretch his leg out. Uh, Vitinha. Gay, yeah. oh, come on. What's the low doing? How can you be tired? It's 69 minutes on the clock. This guy's off, man. How dare you be tired in that moment and refuse to press? Come off the pitch. No overlapping runs. Barely putting a good cross in. Like, how dare you be tired in that moment? He's off, man. Can't afford to go into the second leg. A goal down, two goals down. I want to be a goal up. Or I don't want to say I want to draw because that just sounds like I'm, I'm defeated. We don't accept draws around here. Come on, Martial. Come on, go to him, Bruno. Where's your aggression that you've been showing throughout this save? And it's 2 1. It's 2 1. Gadesh hits it at a really tight angle. It's a good finish. And my players, they don't deserve anything from this game. They don't deserve anything at all. Ball over the top. Gimarez. Rashford. Rashford's been really quiet. That's what surpi surprises me. How can a Ballon d'Or winner have so many games where he goes quiet? Oh, Tamori. Tom oh, barely any oomph behind that. Barely any oomph. To be fair, he's a centre back, but what's a centre back doing all the. Oh, yeah, he's a right back now. <laughs> we've moved them right back. So it's been a really frustrating evening. We've lost 2 1, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happened in this game or what, what the preparation needed to be for this match. But these guys, they completely, completely look unprepared. First touches are, were, were shocking. Finishing, shocking. Passes. Come on, man. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. Only three players. And the fact that Doji got 6.9 and he barely knew where Doku was. Like, these ratings, they're, they're, they're demolished, man. They're shambolic. The issues with starting the episode like that is the fact that we don't have time to lick our wounds. Like, two days later, we've got a cup final at Wembley against West Ham United. And they're not a side that you can just rock up against and just outplay them. They're, they're not, it's not like old times anymore. West Ham United, they've they definitely got a squad that's definitely going to give us a challenge. And are these players up for it? Because at Wembley, the last time we played it, well, the second to last time we played against West Ham United, they embarrassed us in extra time. And they were, the. They, to be fair, like, I feel like we shouldn't have gone extra time. They should have won it in normal time. But yeah, um, yeah, it, it just comes with the territory. You're not going to win every game, but it's, just, it's the manner of the performance that, that disrupts, disrupts my... Um, my morale when it comes to the squad okay so the pre-match build-up is actually becoming really pressurizing now they're um, they're already saying that we're the favorites to, to actually win but like i just said they're not the side that you could just rock up against and outplay them so i don't want complacency to creep in okay, we're wearing our home kit but yeah here we go so um this is the starting 11 in this cup final some are gonna say why am i rotating why not feel the strong side i'm gonna Stick to my guns, continue to rotate in the cup. Bayern there's going to remain in goal. We've got Tapsuba at the back with Euro as they have been the main partnership throughout the season. Frimpong starting on the right, the low shocking. We've got Malassia playing off the left hand side. Adoji needs time to recover from that poor performance. And the midfield remains the same, except Zai Emery's dropped back down to the bench again. Myers is playing off the right hand side. Garnacho's in for Rashford. We can't afford to carry passengers, and also men's the number nine. Wembley Stadium is lit up with the West Ham and the Man United fans. I could barely hear myself think. 
I can barely hear myself think. These headphones are really loud. <laughs> but here goes. We need to bounce back, man. That last performance was uh, really shocking, really demoralizing <laughs> from the aspect of having the pad in my hand. Uh, I just want to create more chances than we did. We barely created anything. I know in the second half, I thought we was actually going to turn up and turn things around. We almost did. But it just wasn't enough action for my likings. Let's go. He's brought down. It's a good tackle by Stupinen. Oh, Frimpong puts the ball in. Oh, Bruno Fernandes tries to squeeze it through Kuhn's uh, legs at the near post. He makes the save for Nate. Malasso with the interception. Yoro to Elliot Myers. He's been outstanding in this breakthrough season. Come on, man. Why do players back up from the ball when it's coming to them? Why can't you just go to it like a normal human being would? Like, I just don't get that weird animation that they do they back up and wait for the ball or they stand still sometimes they go to it but sometimes you have to force them got Nacho ball in oh ball goes in go on Osterman he doesn't even jump Mavropanos beats him in the air and uh, Bowen can clear it out well done Tonali well done Tonali the attack is still alive switch the play to the left Malassa gets it under control he's got Bowen on him Tonali Come on. Uh, every time. I just want to do a one-two on the edge of the box, but somehow they somehow pass it to the centre-back. Like, come on, there's someone that's free. Osimhen. Oh, Bruno Fernandes turns really well. He turns Edson Alvarez. Go on, 1-0. One 1-0, one we've taken the lead at Wembley. 22nd minute of the game. And, uh, yeah, I was just about to tear my hair out after that last attack breaking down. But Bruno Fernandes bags his second goal of the episode. Uh, West Ham United caught in possession at the back. Edson Alvarez spun perfectly by our, cap by our captain. And uh, he does the honours, finishes it and dispatches it coolly. OK, so Wembley has erupted now that we've got a goal. And I just hope that we can now go on and impose ourselves on this game. I feel like the approach for this match is to be slow and strategic i'm sorry for those who are watching but this is how we got to get this over the line and this guys are you telling me are you telling me i can't get the ball from euro to, to malasio like there's something going on with this game and that's exactly how diogo costa gave the ball up for the bournemouth goal two episodes ago euro diagonal pass it to myers just, just takes long, just takes long. Tanali. Oh, well done. Bruno Fernandes turns. Bruno Fernandes outside the box with the shot. Mavropanos makes the save. Come on, how's the, In what world, in what world is that a handball by my player and not Edson Alvarez? I'm doing, I'm doing another video analysis check because this is just stupid. This is just utterly stupid. What's going on here? It hit, it hit his, is that his shoulder? Bet it, Basically hits his shoulder, yeah, and bounces on the hand of Alvarez. Like, how does the decision go to West Ham? Someone explain to me. These referees, they're working against us, man. I've got proof. I've got proof of it. They're actually coming together. I have complained a bit in this match, but a lot less compared to the last one. Oh, Paqueta. What is Tanali doing giving the ball up there? Fernandez into Myers. Victor Schumann. All going to play in the gap. Oh, here we go. Elliot Myers. Elliot Myers threw on goal up against Kuhn. Oh, my goodness me. He took the extra touch. That extra touch thing is criminal. It's been hampering me since FIFA 23. Why can't they just instantly shoot when you press the button? So, uh, the half-time interval's here. And, uh, yeah, like I said in the middle of the match, it's a massive improvement. Passes are connect connecting a lot more. I'm moaning a lot less. Yes, I'm admitting I'm still moaning about... Uh, misplaced passes because I'm clearly not aiming it in certain directions and is kicking it there. But um, yeah, I just want I just want to double the lead as soon as we get the second half underway. Euro, Malasia, Tonali, one two between him and oh him and Garnacho. This has to be a goal. What is going on, man? You just ru you're ruining it. Oh. Uh, why has he done that? I wanted to cross in the box. Myers, I'm going to settle for that, though. Guimaraes, referee, man. Hands are being used. Hands are being used. What a shot, though, from Guimaraes. Great save by Kuhn. I feel like he's the only thing that's uh, keeping West Ham United alive at the minute. Fringpong. Myers. 
waiting for that overlap. He gets it. I'm waiting for the overlap from Myers. But I guess I have to trigger every run now. Tanali. Switch the plane to Malasia. Malasia on the ball. I don't know where to go at the minute. I'm going to swing this one in. As a last resort, ball goes in. I thought Myers was going to out-jump Edson. Alvarez for a sec. Tanali outside the box. It's a hit goalwards and there's another spectacular save from the West Ham United keeper. Xavi Simmons is on for the likes of Guimarães. We've got Simmons playing in that number 10 role. Bruno's dropping in the number 8 position. We've got Osman being replaced by uh, Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, come on, now it's time for Rasmus Hoyland to step up and utilise some of the game time that he's getting. Ball played into the box by Bruno Fernandes. Taps Subo with a close range header. This goalkeeper is just really impossible to get past more than once. Come on, you're telling me Malassa couldn't stick his foot out there. Thank you, Yoro. He stitches uh, Tonali. Come on, Tonali, put a foot in. Come on, what is this jammy stuff? What is that jammy stuff? Oh my God. Oh my God, that is so jammy. There is no way, guys. There is no way you guys can watch this and say that, no, that who, who's that? Who, I think it was Fringpong. Is it Fring? He should be clearing it there. Why is he sticking his foot out? Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes now. 10 minutes to try and salvage something from this. Uh, let's go. Imagine that, their first shot. Their first shot on goal. And they do that. It's wild. It's really wild to me. Go on, Nacho. Go on. Let's turn it up a bit. Go on, Nacho. Ooh, Xavi Simmons. Xavi Simmons, please get into Ho uh, Hoyland. I was going to say Harlem. On Bruno. Takes on the man. Go on, Bruno Fernandez. Xavi Simmons. Go on, Nacho. Ball goes in. Go on. Oh, there we go. Rasmus Hoyland. Rasmus Hoyland restores, restores the lead at Wembley. And it looks like that should be it. That definitely should be it. West Ham United, they've not been in the game whatsoever. If they go on to equalise, I'm resigning. I'm just I'm going to say it here. I'm resigning. This should be our first trophy over the line. Rasmus Hoyland steps up in the last dire moments of this game. Look at that. We bought ourselves some time. We had to be patient. We even tried to work the ball into the box. That didn't work. And a simple old cross did it this time. And uh, Kuhn came off his line prematurely, probably trying to meet the ball. Actually, he didn't. He actually stood there and tried to make himself big. That probably is the difference maker in that moment because Kuhn, whenever he actually put his mind to it, he was able to stop any opportunity that came uh, his way. Come on, blow the whistle, blow the whistle, blow the whistle. There we go. We got over the line. We have now won back-to-back Cowboy Cup trophies. Two years running. And, uh, yeah, it's the start. It's the start of something good. Uh, we still have the quadruple to get done. Okay, so Bruno Fernandes for the second time of the series going to lift up the Carabao Cup trophy. And, uh, yep, first trophy out of the way. It's time to go on to establish some sort of form in the FA Cup, establish better form in the Champions League as we are two, no, not two goals down, one goal down. We're two, one down against Marseille. Hopefully we can bounce back in that tie. Look at the stats, guys. And this is why I raged at the goal because they, they absolutely did nothing all game long. I honestly feel like I need to build trust again in uh, Rasmus Hoyland simply because of all the stuff that's surrounding his name in the in the press and in the media. But when he actually plays like that, when he uh, comes clutch, you've got to appreciate his, uh, his ability to find the goal and find the back of the net. Okay, we've officially given professional contracts to the likes of Mason Porter from the Youth Academy, Louis Noel. Uh, we've also got Mohamed al uh, South, uh, not South, Saudi Arabian uh, uh, winger. We also uh, promoted the likes of, there's a goalkeeper we promoted, Humphreys. There we go. Marcus Humphreys. I feel like he's, uh, he's got a lot of potential. I feel like there's going to be a lot of new faces coming into the first team next season, especially the likes of Wisdom Ali. He's grown quite well. Kobe Mainu. I feel like Martin, Matthew Martin is probably going to be good enough for the first team by the time um, pre-season's over. A few new faces in the team sheet. So Bayern there remains in goal. He's not the new face, but tomorrow he's back in. He's going to be the standing captain, which I'm probably going to address right now i'd rather give it to gimme reyes uh, as the standing captain adoji's back into the side he's playing off the left hand side hoyland is starting as the number nine instead of victor osherman who's not in the team sheet mason mount is going to get some action in this episode playing as the number 10 and uh yeah i think the left and the right hand side of the final third remains the same from the last game spring pong back into tomori gonna switch the play to the left hand side it's taken down by adoji oh got garnacho Adoji overlapping. Adoji is going to play it centrally. Rasmus Hoyland into Mason Mount. He doesn't even hit the back of the net. Come on, Zai Emery. Ball lofted over the top. Adoji takes it down on his chest. He's going to play it in the middle. Bruno Guimaraes. 
going to take the shot. It's blocked. It's blocked. It's cleared away too. I thought the goalkeeper was going to come and collect that. Well, thank you, uh, Garnacho. Still determined to get the ball back. Zay Emery going to go for a long-range shot. Not even on target. Not testing out the keeper whatsoever. Well done, uh, Bruno Guimaraes. Heads it down. Garnacho gives it to Hoyland in the gap. He returns it to Garnacho. Going to try play over the top. Is blocked by Wilmot. Guimaraes. Drills one into Mason Mount. Guimaraes overlaps. Oh, well done. What good football that is. What good football that is. Where was this at the start of the episode against Olympic A. Marseille? Rasmus Hoyland, he caps off a really good attack with a finish. It's 1 0. Bayern there. Fringpong. Myers. Myers is uh, playing the ball into the gap into Rasmus Hoyland. Rasmus Hoyland's in front of goal. Rasmus Hoyland to make it two. He doesn't. Shot from uh, Udoji. That's his second goal in a United shirt. It was a simple finish in the end as the goalkeeper was uh, completely away from his goal. It was an open net and he just coolly rolls it in. Look at this. Rasmus Hoyland, he had a, a lot of the hard work to do trying to get round the defender and poke it past the keeper. But it was fairly simple for Destiny Udoji for the follow-up. As you guys can see, Fernandez, the goalkeeper, not even ready to make a save. Ooh, crossed in, cleared away by Baker. Edwards, one to Mori. Oh, I feel like Zay Emery's not going to get back up. He better. He needs to get back up. Berger. Uh, the recent performances, you never know, man. You never know, especially against West Ham United, a side that didn't have any shots on goal. They still managed to get an equaliser at some point. Oh, what have I done there? What have I done there? Tyrese Campbell. Sh Shamadu. Berger. Campbell gets a shot at the near post. Somehow we survived that. Bayern there just about manages to clutch the ball at his near post as the ball hit the post on the rebound. It fell kindly to him. Referee. How's that north side? Thank you. Berger. Well done. Fringpong gets the ball back for United. Adoji. Back into Fringpong. We need to get the ball out of our feet. We look like we're about to get caught in possession there. Bruno Guimaraes travelling with the ball. Zips in Rasmus Hoyland. He turns right foot strike. Fernandez with the save again. Mason Mount. Gonna swing this one in. Go on. <sighs> Try to hit the back of the net with that one. Baker. Oh, Mason Mount wins the ball. Mason Mount wins the ball. 3 0. 3 0. What are Stoke City doing? What are they doing? It's like they're not playing against the, uh, the European champions. Like, the things that they're doing at the back makes no sense whatsoever. If my defenders did that, just believe there's going to be a lot of um, uh, notices being handed out. The, a lot of uh, contracts being ripped up. We're heading off into the interval. We're freeing them up right now. It's a comfortable performance. In front of goal, we are not. We're far from missing our shooting boots. Which... Go on, head that. Adoji doesn't get ahead on that. Ball played in behind to Tyrese Campbell, who takes the shot. Uh, Bayern there steps up. Uh, last season's uh, Golden Glove winner. Oh, another save to make. Uh, the guy, probably one of the best second choice keepers I've probably ever had during the series. Oh, long shot. Oh, they cracked the bar. A lot of pressure being piled upon us. I want to know what, what was said at halftime. <laughs> I really want to know because Stoke City, they're not letting up at the minute. Go on, Emery. Go on, keep riding the challenges. Zay Emery drills it into Mason Mount. Mason Mount turns. Mason Mount inside the penalty area. Mason Mount gets a shot off. There's a save from Fernandez. It falls kindly to Rasmus Hoyland, who tucks it away. And uh, if I'm correct, is that a hat trick? Is that a hat trick I hear? Is that a hat trick I see? Uh, don't we love it? Don't we love it when a, a negative story somehow transforms into a positive one? Rasmus Hoyland, at the start of the episode, he was actually putting a lot of doubts in my mind. And he's gone on to score a hat trick. I know it's against Stoke City. Well, hopefully this can lift up his confidence because his all-round game performance has been really good in this match. Okay, so we're making several changes. Maru is on for Rasmus Hoyland. Zaya Maru is being replaced by Tonali as a, he's got a, a knock at the minute. Hopefully it's not too serious. Myers has a knock too. I wonder if he's going to shake it off or not. Myers into Gimareas. Heads it down into Yoro. Go and play it forward. Referee, I want to see a red card. If you're stopping play, it has to be a red. Yeah, it is a red. It is a red. So uh, the likes of uh, Walter Berger, he's off now. 70th minute. Stokes are now down to 10 men. 
A poor challenge on Euro. He left one on him. Seven minutes to go. We're 4-0 up currently. Xavi Simmons. Dinks it over the top. Maru can run onto that. No, it's headed out. I thought Xavi Simmons was going to hit first time on the volley. Ball uh, swung back in by Myers. Fringpong re retrieves the ball. Another cross from Myers cleared away by Edwards. And uh, <laughs> there's his get back. There's his get back, I guess. <laughs> and 4-0 Here's the scoreline. We sink 10 men, Stoke City. And uh, we did it without them being down to 10 men, to be fair. But we've got a magnificent performance from Rasmus Hoyland. Bags himself a hat-trick. Didn't really expect any sort of resurgence from his, uh, for his form in this episode. But we are getting a response from him. A perfect one. So Zaya Emery has suffered a hyper-extended knee injury. So he's going to be out for four weeks. Which is unfortunate because he managed to narrow down our injuries to one injury. And that was back up to two. Um, speaking of injuries, let's check to see how long it's going to take for Anthony uh, to get back to training. So Anthony, three months. He's done there out for the whole season, you know. If you actually sit down and deep it, he's out for majority of the seasons. Probably going to be back uh, towards the back end of April or maybe early May. But it's, it's uh, not a good look for him. It's, not, it's definitely not the season he was probably hoping for. Okay, we're about to head off into the next game. The last game of this episode. First versus 10th. Chelsea, they haven't had a good season. Even Fulham, Aston Villa and Leicester City, they're ahead of them. Last season, I thought Leicester City was better than relegation or something like something similar to that. So it's still quite some sort of shock to see Leicester City, Aston Villa, Fulham and uh, above Liverpool and Chelsea. But as you guys can see, we do have a game in hand too, to be exact. We are currently 12 points ahead of Manchester City and Arsenal. So if we end up winning those two games, we can potentially go to go up to 18 points clear. It's feeling a bit like the, the COVID season where Liverpool was running away with the league title. I told you guys, Farmers league pending Manchester United we're here to take over we're here to take over let's head off into the last game of this episode so uh, yeah we got Rasmus Hoyland and Austin Hen they're up front together I feel like we're gonna be able to maximize our full attacking power with those two on the pitch together uh, we're gonna swap Simmons for Garnacho. I feel like Garnacho will be really effective off the right hand side um, I feel like Garnacho's had a really good season as well I, I put him above Rashford if I'm honest with you in terms of in-game performances obviously Rashford is the two time Ballon the winner because he bags most of the goals and he gets mo a lot of assists as well um, but yeah I'm really confident that we can uh, obliterate these, this side the, 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 the 10th the 10th come on man let's go let's get this game underway Okay, match day 26 for us in the Premier League. And uh, we're getting this game on the way against Chelsea live from Old Trafford. It's a sunny day out, 4 p.m. kickoff. I'm assuming it's a Sunday. Um, but yeah, I, I'm raring to go. We're off the back of a good victory against Stoke City. I know they're not Stoke City, but if we can apply some of that, um, some of that technical ability that we had in the final third, that's all it boils down to. Sometimes it's decision making, sometimes it's the final ball. And speaking of a final ball, what a ball by Victor Oshman into Rashford, who's played into the gap. We don't finish it. We don't finish it. And this is what I've been on about. Decision making, finishes are really critical in those sorts of moments. We're probably going to get more chances, but uh, hopefully uh, we don't live to regret that one. It remains 0 0 as Chelsea are hitting us on the break. Madweke, Madweke probably going to look for a cutback. Casado, oh, well done. Bruno Guimaraes helping out his defence. Nkunku. Enzo. Fernandez into Nkunku. He's travelling forward with the ball. A few ball rolls. Gives it to Jaden Sancho. Sancho. Nkunku. Gillette. Into Casado. Odon Tanadi puts a foot in. It's not enough though. Chelsea are still trying to apply pressure. Uh, moving this ball around. Rather sharply. Then they've not made one mistake as well. For far in front of goal, what a save from uh, Costa. They peppered us there. Pochettino ball in full effect, man. And Kunku into Sancho. Casado. That side that's 10th is playing like this. It's actually surprising. Maybe uh, they heard what I said about them in the press and they're like, no, we need to turn up. Can't uh, have a. Uh, Rookie managers that's only been a coach for three seasons. They're calling us out. Chelsea are really playing with a chip on their shoulder right now. Fofana. Fofana inside the penalty area. 
Gives it to Nkunku. There's a save from Diogo Costa. And again, we survived the danger. Uh, Rasmus Hoyland receives the ball from the ball being thrown out by Costa. Rasmus Hoyland does well. Cuts on the inside of Lonomond. Is that Lonomond? I don't think it is. Oh, well. Rasmus Hoyland is in front of goal. He smashes it across the keeper. And uh, we've beaten Robert Sanchez within 20 minutes. We've taken the, the lead. Oh, look at that. Just smashes it across Robert Sanchez. Normally, we don't score that. Last uh, In the last game, FIFA 23, that was my go-to thing. Hit it across the keeper. This time around, you don't know what's going to happen. Ball drilled forward for Fana. Well done, uh, Tapsuba holds him up. Got Sancho in the box and Kunku with the shot. Need to be careful. Oh, what has gone on there? Why is he moving like his Volta? He's getting tricked by dumb things like that. Casado, Sancho takes a shot, left foot strike. Costa again with the save. Chelsea are actually peppering us at the minute. The only difference is that we took the second chance that came our way. 1 2 between Tonali and Garnacho. Works out for us. Ball played forward. Rashford's Hoyland flicks it on. Rashford can run onto it. Left foot strike is blocked by Ibanez. I think that was uh, Ibanez that got done up by Hoyland for the first goal. Fofana. Oh, come on. Don't show him. Don't show him. The centre. Oh, Gunkunku with the shot again. Referee, speak to him for that. Oh, ball played over the top. Enzo Fernandez on the inside. Left foot strike again. Half an hour played and uh, Chelsea have had a, a huge, huge volume of shots on goal. Well done. Uh, not Tomori, Tanali. <laughs> well done, Tomori. I keep getting muddled up with Tomori and Tanali. Like, sometimes I say Tanali when it's Tomori and vice versa. <laughs> uh, Tomori on the ball. A little hybrid right back. Tanali. Just a... Uh, Trying to use the whip to stretch them. Come on, now stop play. Stop play. If that is not a red, I don't know what is. He only gets a yellow card. Reese James. Reese James. You, you both play for England. You both play for England. What are you doing? Rashford. Weird uh, technique to cross it in. Little Mon gets it out. Gimaraes heads it into the path of Tapsuba, who finds Rashford with a nice ball. Ball played into the box. Got an of their head. Uh, this is a scintillating football. Rem ball is evolving right before our eyes. Just to drill a ball into awesome man. He's been really quiet in this game. I don't think he's even touched the ball. Has he even touched the ball? I don't recall him touching the ball. When uh, we play this formation, he normally goes really quiet. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the play happens down the left-hand side, I've noticed. And uh, when we do play down the right, it never makes it to the striker. Ball play forward into Tonali. Here's Garnacho. Garnacho, oh, cross-field ball played into Marcus Rashford. Rashford plays it down into Victor Oshimel. What a goal. What a goal. Direct passing. Direct football played at the best of its ability. Look at that. Look at that, man. Where was this? Where was this against Marseille? Where was this against Marseille? If we play football like this every week, sign me up to a 10-year contract. Extend my contract for 10 seasons because I can sit here and play football like this all day long. So 70 minutes on the clock, we're yet to make a change. Chelsea just seem to be happy to sit behind the ball. Try to go direct again there. Madweke into Jolet. Won't press him into a mistake. They're playing a really dangerous game now. They're forced to hook it away. Rashford heads it down into Bruno. And uh, this is the theme of this match. They hook it away. We come right back with a new threat. Rashford dinks it into the centre. Cleared away by Ibn as he's been really good at soaking up a lot of the crosses. Watch your man. Oh, Garnacho with the shot right at Robert Sanchez. Reese James gives it up. Fernandez. Oh, Oshiman does well to hold on to possession. Slips in a Garnacho. Garnacho through on goals. There's a shot forced out of uh, Robert Sanchez. He gets really low. Oh, Gimareas. Watch your man. Garnacho. We're back in their box again. Garnacho finds the back of the net. 3 0. It's a cool finish at a really tight angle across the keeper. Robert Sanchez is having a nightmare at Old Trafford. Uh, pretty much like any other goalkeeper, really. Garnacho's uh, played really well in this episode. Hasn't really managed to get on the score sheet up until this point, but his uh, performances on the field, they're not, they're not forgotten at all. So we're going, uh, we're reverting to a 4 4 2 formation. Maru is on. Bruno Fernandes, Hoyland, and uh, Gimaraes, they're off. Delo and Xavi Simmons, they're also on. 
We'll give them some freedom. There's Casado. Enzo Fernandez. Oh, Chelsea haven't really moved the ball around like this since the first half. Shot from Madweke. It's a save from Diogo Costa. Ball goes in. Go and get ahead on that to Tatsuba. He does. Gonacho gets control over the ball. Jalet trying to put him off with his uh, challenges. Ball played across the field into Maru. He's forced out wide. We've got Victor Oshiman in the centre. Ball played into the box by the Belgian international. Victor Oshiman with a diving header. What a save from Ran uh, Robert Sanchez. He's not had a good game, but he does deserve praise for that because uh, Victor Oshman does score those nine times out of ten. And uh, that's it, guys. That's it. Three nils. A wonderful performance to cap this episode off. We started off really poorly against Marseille, losing 2-1. But uh, we, we've definitely bounced back. We had a shaky cup final right after that game. Stoke City definitely helped us out with um, licking our wounds, building our confidence back up in the final third. And uh, Chelsea, they definitely put our battery in the back to go on to secure the league title because... Yeah, with uh, two games in hand and we're playing like this, winning like this, there's no reason to why we're going to give up the lead that we have right now. I just feel like we just need to focus on the cup competitions and, and still remain consistent in the league. But obviously our main attention needs to be turned to the cups. And the thing is, it's not like Chelsea weren't trying a thing or two in the midfield or in the final third. It's just that we were just too good. We were too good in the end. After we got the first goal, um, Chelsea, they did look to try to hit us back and uh, get an equaliser. But once the second went in, we just continued to control the game, dictate the tempo. And it was just fairly easy. Really congested the middle. As you guys can see, 60% to their 40% possession. Um, man of the match performance goes to Costa. He did deal with a lot of shots in the first half. He got an assist. When? I want to see this. I want to see this. When did he get an assist? We absolutely don't get to see when he got an assist. I'm I'm really confused to when this man got an assist. We're probably going to have to watch this video back. On the playback, we're probably going to see. But I, I did not see him get an assist at all. But yeah, it is what it is. At the top of the chart for top goal scorers is awesome, man. He's remained on top since the start of the season. He has 18 goals to Haaland and Brobby's 15. Uh, Brobby's back in the league again. If you know, you know. Fever 23, he was a problem for me um Hillman son's got 14 he's level with uh Guiri. and as you guys can see goals against us 11 in the league only we've scored 59 it hasn't been um too easy to get goals like it was last season but we've not been easy to score against at all which is a real testament to the back four and we've had most of our injuries to that back line uh, center back position to be exact so this is more of an appreciation message in our inbox now compared to the start of the episode what we were seeing in the headlines i think this is probably the best way to end this episode uh, Rasmus Hoyland, um, he's, he's given us thanks for putting him back into the firing line. I'm going to let him know. Uh, don't do I do I humble him? No, I'm going to say I'm proud of it. I feel like. I feel like I've given him too much criticism to humble him. And the thing is, I think I've been on his back. I've been on his back since the since the end of last season, since the back end of last season. So it's uh, finally time to give him some praise. I feel like, it's, uh, like I said, it's the best way to end this episode. If you made it this far, please remember to smash the like button, sub to the channel if you are new, and also hit the notification bell so you're notified when I go live, premiere video, or upload one. And again, you guys' support makes you guys MVPs. Like I said at the start of the episode, you guys are legendary. Always uh, returning, always giving feedback, and uh, keep that coming. Um, yeah, there, there's going to be a few polls being run as we are getting to the back end of the season. Season 4 is not too far away, so uh, I probably want to find out targets, budget, um, the, the budget limit, um, the limit of players that you want me to sell. There's probably going to be different types of polls being run. And also, we're going to bring back uh, viewers, player of the season. I know we've been slacking with that. Because um, uh, FIFA 23, I don't think we missed the season of actually getting you guys to vote the player of the season. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to get you guys more involved in the side and, and who's the best player in the side at the current moment in time. Who's the, who's the um, star player that's uh, breaking into the first team? I'm sure you guys are going to pick Myers. If you don't, then are you blind? Are you blind? Let's go. Let's go. Hope to see you guys in episode 32.